Hey everybody, welcome to Tattoo Now TV. I am Ben Licata, your host. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've got a great show, show for you today. We've got uh, Sean Barber, we have Alex DePasse and Ian McCowan. They'll all be Skyping in with us. Uh, Alex is staying up late from Italy and uh, we'll talk about what he's been up to. Um, if you guys have any questions for these guys, you can join the chat room, which you should be able to see on your screen there on the bottom. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you're more comfortable with email, and if, or if you just have general comments, you can email us at tattoonow at tattoonow.com. Uh, you know, criticisms, compliments, uh, free beer coupons, we take them all. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about who brings this show to you. Uh, our sponsors are uh, the Paradise Tattoo Gathering, which is happening this September 12th uh, through the 15th in Keystone, Colorado. All of our artists uh, that are going to be on the show today will be there. Um, I'll be there. It's going to be a great time. If you haven't gotten your tickets, you should do it. Keystone is a beautiful place and some amazing artists will be there. Tattoo Now, uh, where we're coming to you from right now. Uh, Tattoo Now does websites and mobile apps for tattoo artists. Um, and we also produce Tattoo Now TV. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, it's a great network to be a part of. Uh, check it out at TattooNow.com. Sullen Art Collective and Sullen Clothing, um, they provide us with uh, a 15% discount. If you go to their website right now, SullenClothing.com, and type in Tattoo Now into the promo code section, you'll get yourself 15% off. Uh, at Jeremy, i got to give a shout out to him. He hooked me up with some great t-shirts and a uh, my new favorite hat, uh, check out songclothing.com. Ego Tattoo Machines, the newest in uh, rotary machine, small, lightweight rotary machines uh, made by Bez. Pulse Tattoo Supply, our neighbors to the south of here. Hi, Jessica. They've got everything you need. They've got books, flash. They make their own machines. You can get your needles there. Check them out at pulsetattoo.com. Neotat, some other great rotary machines. Uh, Big Gus just used one on me last Sunday. Check them out, neotat.com. So like I said, we've got uh, Sean Barber, Alex DePasse, and uh, Ian McCowan. They're all going to tell us what we've been up to. If you've got questions for them, ask in the chat room. Uh, we will be back in just a minute, and uh, we'll get this rolling. So different to any other convention. It's really, really cool. <laughs> All the shows I've been to, this one is definitely different. And uh, to see uh, the collective artists, you know, at the top of the industry, you know, all in the same building has been a really great experience for me and I'm sure for everybody that has attended this year. because it's purely about the art. So people come here and, they, and everyone wants to share. It's so open, like everyone wants to share and see everyone else progress. It's, a, it's main focus is the art and the artists and the education. This type of stuff is what, you know, makes me feel like I'm on the right path and like helps me stay focused and inspired. This is something different. Um, every year it's been the same. It's, it feels better every time it seems. You know, amazing artists, amazing just atmosphere, almost a bit of a pain to have to work. The Paradise Tattoo Gathering is, is significantly different from many other conventions uh, solely, solely because it deals with the uh, quality over quantity aspect. Many conventions are just a bunch of tattooers in a large room doing tattoos. Um, so this offers a lot more learning potential and other artists can show up if they're not working the show and take lots of seminars and it's like a little mini learning vacation for them. I've done so many seminars this weekend it's hard to put a finger on. Um, I've been inspired in so many ways, uh, spiritually, um, artistically, even like the approach that you have to your clients, to your work. Um, things like that. I think it's been um, it's been inspiring in a, in a whole, not in one way. Um, well, I couldn't even sleep last night. My brain was racing so much. It's great to see the people that are 
at the top of the tattoo mountain willing to share that information as opposed to you know treating every aspect in life as a game to climb over everyone else and just stay up lonely at the top um, there's no sense of that here at the show it's helping to you know increase the visibility of you know tattooing you know around the world and you know just helping you know everybody at least to you know participate you know to get better I would say that um Always, always got home inspired after this kind of, after this particular convention. Mm -hmm. I think this convention definitely has an effect on the industry, and I think it already has changed the industry just in the few years that it's been happening. Hey, we're back, and uh, we're going to get Alex on Skype, and we'll be chatting with him in just a second. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. That was from uh, Paradise a couple years ago, I guess. Um, if you're going this year, it's going to be very similar, but we have got new and improved uh, things going down. Hey, Alex, can you hear me? <laughs> hey, Bang, I hear you. Good. Can you see me? Yes, also. Oh, great. You're yeah. <laughs> hey. Nice to see you, man. <laughs> nice to see you too. Hey, thanks for staying up late to uh, to join us. No problem, no problem. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> well, you know, it's part of my job. <laughs> so, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to lately? Uh, you were just in France, right? You what? Were you, Sorry? Were you just in France? No, I was supposed to go there, but uh, I had a problem with my wife. She has a little problem with the uh, health, and so I didn't come there. Oh, you know, too bad. I'm so sad about that. I was so excited to go there because I know it's a great convention. It has been great. I know that, but, you know, right. sometimes happens that. Well, you know, <laughs> some, sometimes yeah, life, uh, life throws you a curve. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> so, so, uh... What have you got coming up? Have you, are you, do you have any conventions on your horizon? Uh, are you planning on doing anything? Yeah, not, not really soon. Uh, I will come to, to Colorado in September and then London also in September. And then for this, for this year it's enough. Mm. Right on. Yeah. Um, so you were just recently at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference, of course, because you know, you're a huge part of that. Um, yes. Did you enjoy your time at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference? Yeah, it has been great, man. It has been very, very great time. It was in Boston, a nice city. It was a nice mood into the room. Uh, I really enjoyed my time there. R really, um, I learned a lot. Uh, I did my seminar. It has, been, it has been great. Also, all the audience was very happy about what's happened there. So that's the main goal of, of what we're doing, you know, with the Worldwide Tattoo Conference. I really enjoyed your seminar. It was, uh, it was great. It was funny. It was, Thank it was, you. It was informative. <laughs> You know, it was uh, it was really good. I, it was probably one of my favorites of the whole uh, of the whole week. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, I've got a couple questions from the chat room for you. Yeah. And yeah, uh, cool. you know, I'll try to uh, I'll try to be clear, and then hopefully you can understand what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, good. Just if you can speak slowly, it's perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will do my best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, I gotta look it up real quick here. Just give me a moment. Well, actually, you know what? Can you just tell us a little bit uh, about your history for some people that, that don't know um, when you started tattooing? Yes, of course. You know, I, I've been tattooing since I was 14, and now I'm almost 38. Uh, so it's uh, about 23 years, you know, it's a lot. But uh, I changed my career changed about seven, seven, eight years ago. And when I decided to change my style, my tattoo style, my art style, I put all myself in, in what I was doing, and uh, everything changed in one moment. Yeah, I've I've seen some of your earlier work, and then I saw I've seen work, you know, your most recent work, and there was a very yeah. definite change. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. It was com very drastic. It was, uh, it was, yeah, it was amazing. This is, yeah, this is what I, I explained in my, explained in my seminar. You know, because 
sometimes you you're able to do something but probably you don't know you know it's something you have to change in your brain and from one day to the other you're able to do something completely different and that's what's happened to me you know well, all right so I've, i found the question from the chat room and uh yeah it's it's kind of technical so uh bear with me it says uh, yeah do you ever run uh a light color first in your portrait and then build your detail and midtones on top of that? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> That's very concise. No. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a joke. No. Um, normally I start by my midtone. And what is very, really important is to create every time a different midtone uh, compared to the, to, the, to the picture, you know. Uh, uh, um, must be unique for that picture. When you prepare uh, the perfect midtone, it's easy to go darker or lighter. Mm, in my technique, I do I do many many um, layering over layering, so I can go I can do I can go over my midtone with light, and then go back with dark. Uh, you know, but every time I work over my midtone with a solid midtone, and all the rest is just a layering, very soft. In this way here, you can have a very, very soft shading, very soft uh, changing of colors, you know. But the, the key of, the, of my tattoos is the mid-tone. Do, uh, do you blend all of your own mid-tones? Or do you use, use pre-mixed stuff? Or? No, no, because, you know, every time, uh, as I told you, every time I change my mid-tone, because uh, the skin tone, it's a combination of color, it's not one color, you know, and uh, I, I use my, my ink set by Intense, where, where it's uh, six colors, and with these six colors, but mixed in a different percentage, I can obtain all the different skin tone, you know, but every time it changes. So, Hello. well, you're going to be joining us uh, in Colorado. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Are you tattooing? Yes, of course. Yeah? I, I will tattoo and also I will make a seminar. Right. Um, and what's your seminar about? Is, is it similar to the one you gave at the Worldwide Tattoo Conference? Yes, it's quite similar, but every time I do the seminar, I put something new and uh, I, I cut uh, something that I think is not important. So every, every time it's a little bit different, you know, but... Uh, the base is the same of uh, of with of I did uh, of one I did in uh, in Boston. Will you be including the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, it will be the the second part of the seminar. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so, someone from the chat room would would like to know uh, what size needles you use for your blending. Uh, well, of course, depends by the by the picture, you know, but. Uh, I'm used to make the, the first pass with the mid tone with something, uh, for example, nine magnum, seven nine magnum. So in order to have something very very soft, and then I go over with a little bigger magnum, normally like a thirteen, uh, sometimes with a seventeen mag, but not not that often, you know. So mostly I I use a thirteen mag, soft mag, soft age. Um, I've got another question from the chat room. Um, someone would like to know uh, how your cre creative process evolves, like how your process from for tattoos evolves. But you know, uh, I start start. Uh, I was not the normal process to me. You know, I was uh, I was talking the in the normal kind of work. You know, line uh, dark uh, and then light uh, colors. You know, and then uh, I approach other other different arts. You know, I approach, for example, the. Um, uh, airbrush, uh, I approach, uh, approach uh, um, oil painting, you know, and in this technique, you know, you, you use a lot the overlayering, uh, was not so used in the tattoos, you know, and I thought, why not use in the tattoos, you know, and that's what I did, you know, uh, I tried, of course, I did some mistake at the beginning, uh, the, the big mistake was, uh, was very easy to broke the skin, you know, in this way, so I developed my technique step by step, until now, where I where I found a, um, a a good way to obtain a good result without damage the skin, in order to have a, a perfect healing. And they look amazing. Thank I, you. I, I, I love I, your work, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we just needed to talk to you quickly. Um, so I know it's late, 
we're gonna uh, we're probably gonna say goodnight to you, and uh, we're gonna talk with Sean Barber. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and giving us your time. Thank you, and, thank uh, you, Ben. See you in Colorado. I will definitely uh, see you in Colorado. We'll have a good time. Okay. <laughs> bye. Good night, Alex. <laughs> bye, bye. Good night. All right. So that was Alex uh, from Grotto, Italy. He's an amazing man. Uh, he's got a great shop there, and if you're into uh, super photorealistic tattoos, he he can do them, uh, that's for sure. Uh, if you're going to be in Colorado, make sure you swing by his booth and check out what he's working on because his tattoos are just simply amazing. Um, we'll be back in a little bit with Sean Barber. He'll be Skyping in from Los Angeles, as far as I know, and we'll talk to him about what he's been working on. I know he's been doing this huge, uh, huge commission project, 26-something um, portraits for a book. Uh, he's been working on his tattooing, and uh, we'll see what he's been up to. Stay with us, uh, ask some more questions, I'll try to get to them, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute. I'm Ben from Triple Six Studios. Let me show you my ego. I've been tattooing, I've started developing wrist problems and I've noticed a lot of artists have developed a similar problem. With the Ego, the idea was to design a light, affordable machine. So here it is, the Ego. The Ego uses our patented power triangle system, it simulates front and back spring. You have six different grades of rubber, from hard to soft, hard to soft, simulating front and back spring. RCA jack, nice and convenient, nice stable connection. Vice. A little bit of pressure, nice super secure lock. This is the Ego Bio Grip, this is our new grip. It's super comfortable, it's made of super soft silicon. It has a part at the back to help relieve wrist strain and a part at the front to help relieve vibration on the front finger. Tattooists love the feel of a coil machine. There's a lot of rotaries don't behave like a coil. With the Ego, we've simulated the front and the back spring of a coil machine, so you get the best of both worlds. Some of the advantages of using the Ego is you've got extremely extremely lightweight machine which is very movable in your hand you, you, you're not restricted it's more like a pen it's like uh, tattooing with a marker and that is the, the whole idea of the shape of the ego and get the center of balance over the top of the tube and away from the back of your hand so that enables you to have a bit more freedom and a bit more of a marker like experience when you tattoo with that it gives you the ability to tattoo for longer and have a little bit more control over your tattooing process because your wrists aren't getting tired and the weight of the machine is, is nicely balanced. So I've given the Egos a go and the speed is just amazing. Uh, you know, it's just like using a coil. It really is. You know, for the speed and the quality work I can put out. Um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with them. I have many Egos from Bears. Um, probably about six now and I'm very happy with them all. So much time and effort went into making the Ego. I'm happy where it's at and so are a lot of other artists. It's definitely taken off. Hey, we are back. Uh, we're trying to connect with Sean Barber right now. Uh, we're working on it, but uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk to the man that you see on your screen right now, uh, Ian Robert McCown. We'll get him on the line and talk about what he's been up to. He's got a brand new book that I'm dying to get, and uh, I'm sure he'll tell us all about it. We're going to play this by ear. We might have to switch it up. <laughs> Who do we have on the line, Matt? <laughs> Oh, it's me. It's Ian. Hey, Ian. What's up, man? Hey, man. How are I'm you? I'm good. Is your camera turned on? Okay, there we go. I want to. See, I want to see your face. Hey, look. Whoa. There you are. I'm just gonna add Sean in the car real quick. You're a little dark, but. Oh yeah. Hold on. Hold on one second. 
Wow, well, shit's getting crazy up here. Yeah, crazy time. Yeah, well, you know, we got everyone online here now. Hey, Sean, how are you? Awesome. Good, how you I'm doing? good. You just waking up? <laughs> no, I had, a bunch of, <laughs> I had a bunch of friends in town. They just left. Oh, right on. Right on. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, Matt, we're going to talk with Sean for a minute. Ian, we'll be right back with you. So, Sean, what's new? Uh, I've been checking out your Instagram, and I saw you were working on a pretty big uh, commission project of some psychologists or something. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been doing commercial illustration maybe since 2000, 99, 2000. Yeah. Um, and uh, I take that work once in a while. Um, it's uh, 28 portraits for a psychology textbook, I think high school level. It, looked, it just looked like such a massive amount of work. It looked really cool. It, it's a lot of work for two and a half months yeah. <laughs> and trying to tattoo and have a life. So uh, how's the tattoo been going, the tattooing been going? It's going good. Yeah, um, yeah I'm having fun with it. You're digging it. How yeah. do you squeeze in the time? Uh, I don't know. I don't have much, as, much of a social life, and uh, my girlfriend and I work together, and she's okay with it, so it's, it works, you know? So uh, what led you to tattoo? Um, I know the answer, but a lot of the folks that are watching don't know the answer. How did you uh, make the transition? To Ta learning to tattoo? Yeah, like how did you get into tattooing um, from painting? Uh, yeah, you know, I think like a lot of people, I had interest in it. And uh, it didn't ever seem like something that was uh, an option to pursue. Um, you know, I was doing illustration and doing gallery work and teaching. And uh, I was kind of getting burnt on, on teaching in uh uh, like a nine to five job setting um, and uh, shared a studio with a tattooer in San Francisco, uh, Henry Lewis, and um, he, you know, kept um, encouraging, you know, that pursuit and uh, talked to a guy he worked with, Mike Davis, and got an apprenticeship and it just kind of all just happened pretty uh, naturally. I don't know. I think time and place. Everything is time and place, and, and being open to change. You know? Sure. Um, so you're going to be uh, you're you're doing a seminar uh, at Paradise in September. Yeah, I think I'm doing two. You're doing two. Yes, awesome. sir. Awesome. Um, can can uh, you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be presenting? Yeah, the the first seminar I've done uh, quite a bit. It's uh, portrait painting from reference, and it's. Um, uh, we shoot photos of everybody. Uh, it's a three-hour class. Um, go through transferring a drawing, um, color mixing, palette setup, um, and approaching a painting from uh, a pretty direct point of view. Um, it's fun. People usually do really well. Um, <clears throat> it's 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 hands-on, so you know the. Uh, the capacity is pretty small just because I try to help everybody and um, throughout the course of the three hours and, and make sure everybody's kind of on the right page. Um, so it's always good. Um, yeah. What's, uh, what's the other one that you're doing? The other one is, uh, I talked to Gabe about it and before we've done Heads and Hands mm -hmm. and um, I feel like each one of them could be their own thing. Right. Uh, and I'm on the fence with if it should be broken up into just doing heads or if I should try to just contain it a little more and be more efficient in how I approach it and have it be heads and hands. I, I don't know. I got to deal with that. <laughs> well, you don't have to, what do you you don't have to what give do you me think? all the details right now. I dug your, hand, your heads and hands one, man. I, I, I have uh, your pamphlet on you, my drawing you, table right now. Would you break it up into, into focus on one or the other? Or would you just keep it as is? I think, I, you know, you can't fit everything in, in the time you're allotted, but I think uh, having both is cool. Um, okay. But, you know, having one that was just heads might be pretty cool. Um, but yeah. I don't know if you could do one that was just hands. Maybe you could. I mean, you do a lot of work uh, with hands anyway, your paintings. I mean, for yeah, sure. I could do either. I, I think maybe both makes, I think that makes most sense. <laughs> so maybe you should do three. No, I have to make tattoos. So you're going to be tattooing out in Colorado as well? Yes, sir. You all booked up? 
Uh, getting getting there. <laughs> That's are we gonna work on I you? I hope so, man. Yeah, let's do it. That, that would be good. great. Uh, yeah. yeah, my sleeve's coming along nicely. Right on. That uh, would be great to get back in, into this. Is it over? What? Is your arm done? No, no. I have uh, a small space left uh, on my forearm and a little, I have my elbow, but uh, Jose Perez Jr. is going to be working to fill that up uh, next Sunday. Awesome. Uh, Big Gus just gave me one on my wrist last week, last Sunday. Nice. Yeah. What did he put on you? Uh, it's a big surprise, but he put a skull on there. Nice. I mean, that's, so you got, a, you got an arm full of skulls? It's all skulls. Hell yeah. All skulls. Hey, can you turn your camera on? Oh, yeah. It's an auto. No, we're looking at one of your paintings. Uh, I can't see anything. You can't see anything. Maybe you got to enable your video. Camera may be in use. Oh. oh. No big deal. Your voice is great oh. anyway. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> oh, so we got a... Someone from the chat room said hands, and then someone else said hands even louder, so. Oh, shit. So people want more hands and less head. I don't know. I want more head myself. <laughs> Strictly drawing, painting, of course. Right, right. You know, we'll keep it professional around here. That's right. So, uh, serious business. Have you finished your DeVita painting? Oh, uh, it's pretty close. Yeah, um, yeah you know, I, uh, I'll start something and get about 90% done and then kind of get bored with it and then kind of move on to the next thing and then it sits there for quite a while before I uh, get back in. Yeah, you know? I understand. Do you ever feel truly finished with a piece? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. How does this work? Oh, uh, we saw you for a minute. It was, yeah. it was good to see you for a second. Um, How do I see you? You can see me on your Skype. You should be able to see, see one of your tattoos. I don't see anything. All right, well, right now we're showing the tattoo of the, the, the elephants. Oh, yeah. The, with the locomotion tattoo there. Yeah, that, that, uh, that guy's great. That's a it's my pretty badass tattoo. Um, Thanks. I've noticed that your tattoos are starting to take uh, a turn for solid, like, tattoo tattoos, like traditional almost, with, like, bold, bold lines and, like, saturated colors. Is that intentional? Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Um, yep. you're, you're less, uh, less painter-like and more, more tattoo-like. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of sayings people have, and they're all silly. <laughs> um, uh, I, told, I, I told Kim, bold will hold, and she said, bold will get old. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I like the way they look. Um, I think the gra like a lot of graphic elements and tattoos just look powerful. Um, if you can tell what something is from across a room, like that's a statement. Um, I like detailed stuff in black and gray where you can kind of tweak out on it, like you know, it's from close up. But outside of that, um, I don't know. There's something about composing and designing with shapes so you can appreciate the tattoo from. You know, 20 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet, 1 feet, 1 inch, you know? Yeah. Hey, if, if you had any advice for someone that was looking to get a really great tattoo um, and how to go about it, what would you say to them? Uh, I would ha have them uh, educate themselves a little bit on the style of tattoos that are out there and then think about subject matter, you know? Uh, I think everything's based off subject, and if you're... Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people feel like they might have to force meaning into a tattoo, but they can just appreciate the art of it and get something that looks nice, you know? Do you think someone uh, should be patient, or you think they should just uh, find the cheapest guy in town? Or <laughs> uh, I think everybody gets the tattoos they deserve, and you live with the choices you make, you know? Yeah. And if you're impatient, then you're going to get tattoos that reflect that, you know? So, you're still getting tattooed. Um, I get tattooed all yeah, the time. I, saw, I, I, I see your, uh, your, you just, you just got one from uh, Zulu. That's right, Zulu. Yeah, man. It's a oh, badass yeah. tattoo. It's pretty sick. Um, is there any artists, He's a good are dude. there any artists out there that you're looking to get tattooed by, or you just uh, play it by ear and roll with it? Just friends. Yeah? Just friends. Yeah, I want to get tattooed by friends. I don't have a lot of space left, so, um, 
Uh, you got to do your face next, I guess, huh? No, it's, no I'm not no, doing I'm that. I'm just kidding. It's okay. <laughs> you got any, uh, do you have any gallery shows coming up anytime soon? Uh, I was in one last night. I was in a group show at a gallery in Culver City called uh, Maxwell Alexander. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a, a, painting, a show of skull paintings. Uh, it was a pretty good show. Um, a lot of more kind of realism, representational artists showing there. Um, I'm in an anniversary show at 111 Minute in San Francisco in uh, September. And um, I think there's another show out here, a group show, Bain Art. Uh, it's like a, a big surrealist collective. Um, Bainart.org. Um, they're having a show at Copro Gallery uh, in November, maybe. Um, but I've been taking a break. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have uh, got a lot of friends who uh, I'm an art collector and art lover, and I trade with a lot of those people. And um, I've had a pile of of old trades to a lot of folks, so I've been slowly kind of picking away at that, and uh, I feel like I want to just kind of get over that hurdle before I really start thinking about what to do next. So uh, no big solo shows uh, coming up anytime soon for you, huh? No. Nope. Uh, nope. That last one was amazing. Uh, Thank was, you. Thank you. I can't even imagine the work that went into that. That's it was... It was, it's a, it's a uh, what does they call it? It's a passion of... A labor of love? Labor of love, yeah. Right. You're not making any money doing that's, it, really. Uh, you're looking at one right now. That's that's what this show is all about, man. It's uh, we do it because yeah. we, because we love it. Yeah. No one's making any money. It's good. It's good. Yeah, you know we're trying to. We're what trying else, to be, what else are you gonna do with your time? Yeah, right. I don't. You know. Smoke weed. No, I don't smoke weed. Believe it or not. See, then you're okay. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, you know, I, I enjoy a cold beverage every once in a while. Yeah, those are good too. I don't know. I could spend some more time painting. Learning to paint has been but, fun. Yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing like it, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to tattoo more. I think the next goal for me would be outside of, like, finishing all the the weight that's been, in, you know, in front of me. I've, I've been um, taking a lot of jobs just because I have uh, uh, a lot of back tax debt and I have... Um, uh, student loans and, and uh, you know, just like everybody got bills. Um, and some of that, that weight of that debt's uh, alleviating. Um, so I think the next step is to start doing some art pieces, flash, not flash, that may be flash, um, illustrations for tattoos. Like, you know, what what would be fun to, to, to make and put on the body? And, and I think, bless you. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I think that's the next step, I think, uh, to translate, you know, it's like, I've done enough tattoos where I, I have a clear direction and idea of where they should go, and I've never, ever really drawn anything and painted it or colored it, you know, done a watercolor. I just make tattoos because it's a job. Right. Uh, you know, and... and you can't spend two weeks um, on everybody's drawing, you know? <laughs> no. Just reality. Right. There's only so much time, and people want to get tattooed, and it's, it's just what it is, you know? But you're, you're enjoying yourself doing it, yeah. You dig it. It's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. Yeah. Uh, have you found it tough on you physically to tattoo all the time? Um, you know, just the, the natural position of tattooing. Uh, have you found like you've had to make you know like you have to do like a workout regimen or anything to keep stretched or? Uh, I have a lot of a lot of hand problems. Um, I have uh, my fingers go numb a lot. Um, you know I I'm not the most physically active person. I ride my bike here and there. Um, Kim keeps trying to get me to do yoga, which I know would help my hands. Um, listen, listen. I to think your from. Woman. I know. I think from painting, like with a small brush, a lot, um, and just drawing, drawing more, mm. drawing more for tattoos and the act of tattooing. It's uh, and if I'm not doing that, I'm cleaning something or painting baseboard or, you know, <laughs> I, everything I do, I want to I do with my hands and I can't stop. So I, I need to learn to give it a rest. Right. Yeah. I think there should be a seminar on uh, ergonomics of tattooing. You know, like. 
teaching tattoo artists to uh, take better care of themselves so they can keep doing it for a long time. Yeah, some people do it, but most people yeah. don't. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of uh, health issues in the tattoo community recently. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's a bummer, you know? There's, there's guys who've been doing it for so long and they're having health problems. And I think if uh, maybe they took care of themselves a little better along the way, maybe they'd be yeah, doing all right, sure. you know? For sure. Well, and there's no uh, retirement plan. There's no, you know. Yeah, no, no health insurance. No health care. Yeah. yeah, none of that stuff. The, the joys of being uh, self-employed. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, it's a, it's a great job. I mean, if you're going to do art, it pays well, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it gives more than it takes. Sure. Well, hey, man, thanks for talking with us. Uh, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Um, Easy. Yeah, no, it's really, it's simple. Is there anything you want to add to the conversation, you know? Uh, anything you, uh, I, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, Paradise. It's always fun. Um, you know, I, I think like a lot of us, it's like we, we want to help out. We just, um, for me, I don't want to just do something. I want to do something that, that people are interested in, in uh, reciprocating, you know? Um, I don't want to talk at people. That's not fun. No. <laughs> I can understand. Well, hey, man, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Colorado. Um, yeah, let, yeah, let's work on your arm. That would be, that would be awesome. And uh, I, thank hey. you for taking some time out of your day to, uh, to come on our little internet show. Uh, Anytime. I really appreciate it. And, uh, Maybe next time I can see your guys' faces. Yeah, next time we'll, uh, we'll do a little test ahead of time, and we'll hook it all up, and uh, we'll get you so you can see my ugly mug. All right. All right, man. Thanks, Sean. I'll uh, have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Welcome. Take it easy. Bye. All right. Well, that was Mr. Sean Barber. I hope you enjoyed that uh, with him. Um, he's a great dude. Uh, come check him out in Colorado. I know I seem like I'm pushing Colorado just because I'm very excited. <laughs> and I need to get out of this place for a while, and uh, Paradise will be the perfect uh, little respite for that. Uh, we'll be back in just a second with the ever-patient Ian Robert McCown, and uh, he's going to talk about his new book and what he's been up to as far as painting and tattooing. We will see you back in just a minute. Thanks for hanging out with us. That was a nice little uh, Richie Bulldog video shot there. Uh, Richie's a friend of the show. All you haters can suck it. Um, so we're going to be talking with Ian. Hey, Ian, can you hear me? Yeah, hold on one yeah, second. Still yeah, there? I'm here. Um, cool. I, was, I had to shut down my, uh, my browser. Oh, okay. So, so uh, we just need to uh, see your face. My camera should be on. Really? Oh, hold on, let me I'm check. showing that it isn't. Man, you guys are... <laughs> What's that? This is on your end. This is on your end, dude, because mine, mine was working uh, earlier. I don't know. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I know. Video's off. Yeah, my video's on, for okay, real, bro. so... Um, I don't know what's up. But whatever, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's some things, there's, there's, there's gremlins in the machine sometimes. So, tell us a little bit about what your book is. Uh, it's been doing well, right? You're almost sold out. Yeah, dude. I, um, after getting a lot of feedback on a lot of the pieces I've done over the past few years, I decided to, instead of fielding a million questions about um, the book and my process, I figured I would just go ahead and uh, write a book so I can get it out there. I had a, a really good talk with um, sort of an online friend about how art is the one thing where everything you need to know about it is out there for free online, you know. So I think it's sort of become uh, uh, 
sort of a thing I want to do with the rest of my career, which is disseminate everything I know about it, you know. And uh, this book is sort of a means to an end on that, and it's been really uh, well received. I think uh, my original uh, run of prints was 500 books, and I'm down to 11. Wow! So, nice work, yeah, so man. It's, it's, no, it's been pretty awesome, and I've had I have six distributors. Um, I think I've sold to something like 13 or 14 countries now. So uh, I, I couldn't be happier with it, and, and more humbled as well. So congratulations on your success. That's uh, it means Thanks, you man. got a good thing going. Yeah, I think so, and I think it's uh, a lot of the people that I know online, man, I've been on the sort of like tattoo website, you know, social media for many, many years, and I think a lot of that's carried over, you know, we watched each other grow from, from, for, for many years, you know, so I think I've had a lot of support in that arena as well. So do you think you can uh, directly translate uh, what you're learning uh, from your book as far as, you know, shadows, highlights, that kind of stuff into tattooing is not just drawing and painting? You know, I, I think it's the same thing, and I think if there's a there's one thing people need to understand, especially with reproduction work, um, portraiture, things like that. That um, th these art concepts, the stuff I'm teaching, is foundational. We're not talking about like an advanced technique. We're talking about a very foundational way of seeing um, a piece and then reproducing it somewhere else. And of course, in tattooing, especially with portraiture, that's that's basically all it is. That, that's bread and butter. And I, I've known several artists who, you know, they're doing a, a portrait and it looks okay, but they're completely missing the mark as far as the value structure sometimes. And I think um, with a little bit of practice, you know, the, the adage is if you can't do it on paper, don't do it on skin. Well, I think we need to be doing it more on paper as well. <laughs> right. You know? For sure. So, yeah, I think it translates directly, you know, and I think if uh, any artist of pretty much any skill level should be able to use this stuff. So have you been doing a lot of tattooing? You've been busy? You know, dude, I tattoo four days a week. Yeah. And I do I do tops two a day and that's my maximum. I just get I get kind of freaked out if I do more than two. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 kind of weird, but that's just how it is. Um uh so that being said I, I, I am pretty much I uh, usually book out a month or two, not not too far in advance. Uh I, I tend to need a little bit of energy, um, mo a little bit of momentum on pieces. So if I were to book something, say six months from now, I, I would probably lose all interest in it by the time that it came around. Oh, you know? of course. And uh, you know, so I, I just try to I do I try to do um, either one to maybe three or four sitting pieces. I, I don't like doing sort of uh, these monumental back pieces that some of these great artists do. It just seems like something that's going to take a million years to do it, and it always does. Right. And, you know, I mean, I, I just want to keep that energy going because there's, there's something to be said for something that you can do right now, you know, or, or in two sittings, you know, a couple of weeks' time. It's just done. It's amazing. You're happy. They're happy. So, um, yeah, uh, I've been tattooing a lot, and uh, it's been great. I, I kind of upped my game recently as far as letting people actually get in the chair because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty lazy, to be honest with you. I have a lot going on, so, um, but, but I've been really trying to focus on my customers and my clients. Uh, and, and to make sure that I'm, I'm getting able to put the work I want to do out there, you know. So, so uh, you're, where can people find you if uh, they want to get tattooed by you? And, and um, I'm based. I'm based in Denver at a shop called Old Larimer Street Tattoo. Um, it's probably the nicest looking shop I've ever been in. There's seriously like a marble statue with like a fountain in wow. <laughs> in the lobby. Fancy. Yeah, you know we have like nine foot tall frame mirrors, and and not that the, not that the decor has to sort of. Uh, dictate uh, the kind of work you're getting, but I think it shows the shop owners actually care about the place. And, um, you know, the clients come into a tattoo shop and it doesn't, we're not all sitting around smoking cigarettes and folding up our, our shirt sleeves. You know, it's not, a, <laughs> it's not a West Side story, you know, we're not a bunch of bikers up in there. It's just a bunch of tattooers who really uh, want to succeed and want to do good work. Um, so, so I'm in Denver and uh, I do do guest spots here and there, but it's, it's pretty few and far between. Right on. What do you? Uh, what, what's yeah. uh, what's in your uh, near future? What are you up to? Uh, have you been painting and tattooing? Are you traveling at all? I am doing uh, Hell City next Phoenix, month. Phoenix. All right. Um, actually, I'll be I'll be at uh, off the map uh, Northwest um, first, and then I'm doing Hell City Phoenix, and uh, I think the timeline goes to Paradise Gathering after that, yeah. and then um, I'll be at uh, off the map Northeast in October. And I think uh, in early, early 2014, I'm doing a Joshua Carlton's Invitational uh, Tattoo Gathering. Nice. So that's kind of awesome. Yeah. He was a really early inspiration of mine and uh, bought one of my paintings one time. It, it almost 
I almost had a heart attack, you know. <laughs> so to be so to be invited to kind of be with an artist who I've always respected and admired, it's 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 been uh, uh, it's really been uh, great. Yeah, know, that's so. a great great feeling. I'm sure. Yeah, and beyond that, I'm still painting. Uh, have a lot of stuff that I want to do. Artists always have big ideas and, and, and big series and big things they always want to do with themselves and not enough time but I've really focused on uh, my time. I've actually moved into my studio full time so I'm just surrounded by workbenches and, and canvases and so hopefully that's going to um, show through here real soon, you know, some of the new work I'm doing. So uh, while you're at Hell City you're going to be doing a seminar, correct? I am doing uh, one at Hell City and one at uh, uh, the Paradise Gathering. Right. Um, both are sort of uh, you know loosely based on the book um, that I put out recently. It's just about value and kind of understanding it, understanding how to interpret it. Um, like I said, I, I think that uh, I think I made a post online the other day that I think tattooers should be held to at least a first year art school sort of standard, in that we should all know how to handle value. You know, we should all know how to shade a cube, you know, I mean, really simple stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not trying to be like uh, pretentious or condescending. I, I just think that um, as a whole, the, the entire tattoo community would be better off if we understood some, some of the foundational stuff that, that may have been overlooked, you know. Um, because usually we're not taught that. Usually we're taught to outline a kanji and fill it in with some blue. And that's awesome. You right. know, that's great. And <laughs> but, but when it comes to, okay, understanding these light sources and stuff, uh, especially when we have a billion colors we can use and we can just kind of tweak everything out to the maximum. We, we, we lose sight, I think, of some of the very simple precepts of, of art and, and you know, composition and stuff like that. Well, you know, I so. think in the early days of tattooing, the, uh, the fundamentals of art weren't really there at all. Uh, you know, it wasn't considered the same kind of thing. And it's, it's good now that the shift has occurred where that, you know, tattooing is art and uh, you really should. Well, it... it yeah, I mean, it's becoming ridiculous with guys like, say, Sean Barber. And uh, there's an artist you may not know of, and his name is David Gluck. He is, I mean, David Gluck is an extremely talented, fine artist, um, realist painter. And he recently took an apprenticeship with Joshua Carlton. So we've got these... We've got these wolves <laughs> running, running amongst us, you know, and they are going to up the game to a point where everyone who's not already trying to get to another level, they're just going to be left behind. And, I, and I'm not saying this is necessarily a race or competition, but it's like, look, man, we're, we're really promoting a higher level, a higher standard for the rest of the industry. And, and I think, man, we can just take this place so much further if we all just start pushing together. You know, I, you know? I think life is kind of a competition, you know? I mean, you don't have to win, but... You always want to get better. You always want to do better. I, you know. Sure. Why? What's the What's the oh, point yeah. if you don't? Really, you know. It's it's. Well, and, you know, I, and I obviously think the competition begins with yourself. And uh, I was telling somebody I was at the art store earlier, and I was telling him that one of the reasons I put the book out as well was because I'd considered a lot of the work I had done for that book sort of trite at this point because it had been so formulaic. And I think that once you hit that level, whether it's tattooing or art, that's when you need to start like sniffing around for your own next level, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, I remember Jeff Gogway said something recently in an interview, something like that, about how he keeps motivated. And, uh, you know, he said he reaches the plateau all the time, you know? And I think that if you're not pushing past those plateaus, you know, you're, somebody else is pushing right past by you, you know? So. Yeah, you, you don't want to get complacent, you know? I mean, Life would no. be boring if you if you did. <laughs> so, no, you know, and you know, I, I'm getting to be. I, I turned forty this year, you know, and I'm I'm starting to think. Okay, what's my legacy going to be? And do I want it to be a, a bunch of junky paintings sitting around, or right. <laughs> or do I want it to do I want it to be a bunch of awesome paintings, or or awesome tattoos, or you know, uh, do I want to have helped foster uh, a next generation of, of artists or whatever, you know, and, and I think that uh, you're only going to get there by pushing yourself so, you know, constantly. Uh, as far as painting goes, uh, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm going to do uh, Jeff Kogway and I think Teresa Sharp and Off the Map are uh, sponsoring a, uh, a show called Endangered Species. Yes, we are. And I'm going to be doing a painting for that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do an animal or not, but I have something really amazing set up. And then uh, I'm going to be doing um, a series that I haven't really uh, talked a lot about online yet, but it's uh, dealing with uh, feminine beauty and how um, how it can inspire such awe and then sort of such brutality. And I know that sounds weird and creepy. Uh, but yeah, well, a little, but... Uh, <laughs> but, but no, but I, I don't know if you saw the dead girl painting I did. I had it at the... Uh, the one at 
at the, I saw at the, it at the artist retreat. Yes, I did. You know, and it's sort of like dark, but it's not necessarily like it's, it, bad. It's, it's very dark. You know. But <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, anyway, in my in my brain, it's sort of how how far can we take a dark image, yet still keep it beautiful? Sure. And so I, I'm I'm gathering together a bunch of like uh, eight foot tall canvases, and I'm going to do some life size paintings that are similar to that, and just sort of push something, you know, because my, my, my paintings are typically pretty boring and the only way that I can uh, stay contemporary is to kind of change my uh, subject matter a bit, but, but not enough that I feel like I'm pandering or I feel that I'm uh, in any way like, you know, uh, letting my vision suffer. Right. You, know? you, gotta, you, gotta, so, I mean, but, you have to do it for you first, obviously. And... Yeah, you know, and, and more than likely, eight foot tall paintings aren't going to sell <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> So I'm just going to end up using these as like uh, retaining walls in my house or something, you know. It's not. Um, I'm sure you know, Sean. I'm sure Sean Barber can relate. He's got that gigantic Shige uh, painting I'm still in his in his uh, in his studio. Yeah, you know, it, big stuff doesn't sell. I have a sort of funny anecdote. I did a not an anecdote, but a, a small story. I uh, painted a full frontal nude one time of me. And I didn't want to move with it, so I just left it in the garage and bailed <laughs> when I left that house. And uh, one day, a friend of mine texts me a picture, and she's sipping tea, and behind her is this massive nude painting of me. And apparently, <laughs> um, the the owner of the house had sold it to a local like uh, gay piano uh -huh. bar, and apparently, that painting is like a local like celebrity, you know. So <laughs> that's great. <laughs> people, yeah, people don't buy stuff like this, but they like it. Trust um, me. You know, that's so. hey, you know, that's a fitting place for your painting. You know, so exactly, gonna appreciate exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, leads me to have to make a little note myself. Uh, if anyone out there saw the Instagram post that I used uh, of of Ian, where he looks naked, I, it wasn't I wasn't joking around or clowning with you know. I, I thought that was legitimately right. uh, strong image. I wasn't trying to wasn't trying to clown I on Ian at all. No, I wasn't naked either. Right. I actually uh, I was actually a model for a photography class because you know I'm kind of weird looking. So if we had a camera, the viewers would see that I'm actually weird looking. But uh, um, no, it was just a, it was it was nothing. But a, a couple of my friends were like, "Oh my God, you're shirtless!" And I'm like, "Dude, come on! I'm shirtless half the time on the internet. It's not a big right, deal." Right? Exactly. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're you're you work out and you're covered in tattoos, and uh, you know, it's yeah, like what? I don't know. Yeah, I it's, think it's cool. It's beast. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. I almost did. I almost did today's interview without a shirt, but I thought that <laughs> might be a bit too much. So <laughs> that would be pretty pretty awesome. Well, you know, we, you would be the first. We almost we yeah. almost did one with Nick Baxter like that, but we made him put a shirt on. That would have been awesome, dude. I don't know. That's you got you got to set your own trends here, buddy. You we do. start doing sh shirtless webcasts. All right, man. Yeah, well, we I mean, should do it. It's there was shirtless there was shirtless tattooing, so I mean, I don't see why we can't have shirtless uh, webcasts. Sure. You know? <laughs> Agreed. Hey, do you want to hang around and uh, look at the uh, tattoo of the day with us? I certainly You've will. Done that with us before, I'm sure. I'm yep. going to tell the folks about what it is. Uh, Tattoo of the Day uh, comes from our website, Tattoo Now. Uh, artists upload their images, and then every day we pick one to, uh, to be Tattoo of the Day. Uh, and then we put them all together, and every two weeks on the show we talk about it. Uh, and daily we upload it to the Tattoo Now app, and you can check it out there. Um, Ian also has a new app, so you can show, check, out, check out his app, uh, Tattoo Now. Uh, put that together for him. There it is. Tattoo Now did, did a great job. Tattoo Now um, did a fantastic job. And it updates so quickly. It's not even funny. It was completely worth uh, the wait, and it was worth the money. So I recommend it. Yeah, and if you're waiting on an app from us, we apologize. There's, uh, there's only a few of us here. <laughs> well, beyond that, I think you have to wait to upload them. So right. it's not always uh, you guys. It's, it's Apple that has to. Yeah, wait, so. we, we have to wait to get them approved by Apple, the all-powerful Apple. All right, so we're going to run through Tattoo of the Day. Uh, if anyone has our app, you're welcome to follow along. And uh, we'll just take a quick look at some of these uh, great tattoos that came through. This first one is by Toto. I don't know even if you could see that or not. Can you see that? I can see, I can see it a bit. The resolution isn't very high. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Um, it doesn't really lend us to have great resolution for sure. It's, uh, it's, it's got one of the, uh, the plague masks on, yeah, huh? it's, that's it's awesome. It's got like some <laughs> steampunk kind of elements going on on the chest of this bird. That's, uh, that's fantastic. That's totally fantastic. Uh, this next one is by uh, Off the Map Northeast artist, uh, Max Rothert. I don't know if you know Max or not. 
I do. Uh, Max is actually super awesome and really nice, and uh, he's been doing some amazing black and gray work lately, just big, large-scale stuff. So I'm, this thing's awesome. Yeah, and, and the uh, <laughs> recently Max has really been taking off. You know, he's been doing some amazing work. And, uh, oh, I, I agree. He's been uh, getting published and and just doing some <laughs> really large-scale stuff. So it's rad. He's working on a full uh, chess piece of a giant ship right now as we speak. Wow. I, I checked awesome. on it before the show. It's badass. Uh, this next one is uh, Melissa Fusco. <coughs> Pardon me. It looks like a, uh, a food dog of some sort. <coughs> Excuse me. This is, uh, let's see, Perry and, I'm sorry Perry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Shot to prod it or something like that. <laughs> I would help you, but I don't know. Yeah, what I'm it, but, uh, you know, it's it's tough. But Perry's work is amazing. <coughs> it looks like a psycho monkey on a tra train. I dig it. Excuse me, just a second. I'm gonna get a drink of water. <coughs> All right. <coughs> this is a Timothy Bohr piece. Tim's great. I love his work. Well, not, not, I mean, uh, what's great about Tim is that he can do a piece like this, which is sort of a, a really nice, maybe a memorial piece, but he also does like really dark pieces mm. um, in black and gray and uh, a, a lot of really good color work as well. So, I mean, super well rounded, you know? Definitely. It's great work. And this is a, a color piece from Stefano, who's been doing a lot of black and gray lately. So, it's nice to see him uh, delve into some color. Yeah, he, uh, he posted that really cool uh, painting video of his. Oh, man, that's such a uh, badass video. That, oh, it's just amazing, and it's so disheartening. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because you're just like, man, this guy is just on top of his game and on every aspect, and he's putting out this amazing video, too. No, the guy is uh, legit, man, like 100%. And this tattoo is just great because it's so hard to do with such light, um, light, light, light uh, colors on a realistic piece and still get that depth. So yeah, it's just fantastic. You just almost like grab that dog's lip. It's just so perfect. <laughs> That's how I dig it. Uh, this is David Machaney. It's a nice nautical piece. Yeah. Next one is uh, Nick Baxter. We all know Nick does amazing work. Um, he's uh, incredibly uh, into detail for sure. He spends a lot of time on his pieces. He'll go over and I think, over. I think he's just super intense as well. I think uh, I've been around Nick a few times, and the, the liveliest conversation I ever got from him was a nod. Oh. <laughs> you know, so, and I, th I think it's just he's really intense, and that's why his pieces you know, come out that way, because he's just really focused in on it. And uh, obviously his paintings are ridiculously good as well. Yeah, his paintings, I mean, the time that he spends on those paintings, it's just, uh, I don't know how he does it. You know, it's just hours upon hours upon hours. And so many layers you couldn't even count them, you know. Very talented man. This next one is, uh, I don't know if that's Dougie or Doogie. Do you know this artist? I do not. Looks like a, uh, a Mad Hatter of sorts with some sort of colored splatters on its face. Next up is a uh, Ty McEwen. Amazing artist. Yeah, yeah Ty's been doing some great work. I'm actually it's surprised like, uh, it's not bio. Yeah, no, he's like a, he's like the king of uh, texture. Him and Nick, man, it's just uh, they can build so much believable texture out of just their color palette, which is uh, fantastic. And if anyone's actually really tried to do that, it's extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Aaron Delavadova. This is one of those crazy involved full back pieces that you might have been talking about. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous, man. Like, who the heck wants to spend 180 hours with a customer? <laughs> no, but it, it shows through. It's amazing. And then the people that can do that, just compositionally, not just, like, the actual tattoo time, but just compositionally, it takes a, uh, it just takes so much. And it, it's so amazing. It's like uh, looking at an Adrian Lee back piece. You're yeah. just like, wow, how did you even, how'd you even come up with this, let alone pull it off? It know? has that same kind of uh, amazing lighting that Adrian puts into his pieces, for sure. Yep. Uh, this next one that we're going to look at is actually done by Sean Barber, who uh, was just on the show. Definitely uh, has his style all over it, kind of illustrative, 
Uh, although, like I said earlier in the show, he's been doing a lot more. He's going more towards traditional style. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I uh, was always surprised when I started looking at Sean's tattooing how, um, how not painterly it was, mm. you know? I, I expected it to be like 100%, you know, painterly, and I think uh, it's refreshing to see his, his brain going, you know, several directions at once. It, so it's good. Uh, I've heard Sean say that he wants to make tattoos that look like tattoos, you know, and uh, it, it definitely shows. No, it's great. And uh, last on the list is another one from Ty McEwen. He's, uh, he's been doing a lot of work lately. Winner, winner, chicken yeah, dinner. Yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so this is kind of like oh, this... ornamental bio. It's kind of cool. Yeah, this is, like, this is like the new thing, dude. The, the ornamental uh, like flourishes and, and stuff uh -huh. like that, which uh, Russ Abbott's been crushing at that stuff lately. And, uh, in two weeks, uh, in two weeks, Russ will be here with us in East Hampton um, doing, talking about his uh, ornamental stuff he's doing a uh, he's doing a seminar here with us that's amazing man the guy the guy is super talented and uh beyond this so, sort of element the the ornamental work he's doing i mean if you just look at the 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 breadth of his portfolio it's just amazing amazing work you know solid yeah uh, while he's here he's gonna play a little banjo for us too and uh, we're actually gonna we're gonna do this <laughs> show we're gonna do this show in front of a live audience not just live broadcast but we're actually gonna have people in studio uh, and Russ will be there, and we're gonna have a party after. We're just gonna play some banjo, and uh, you should do it on you should do it on the porch out there on the sidewalk. Well, we're gonna we're, we're know, doing I... it right down at uh, a local mini theater, Popcorn Noir. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Uh, so if anyone's local Sweet. and they want to come check it out, it's uh, it's open to the public after his seminar. So it's definitely gonna be a good time. Well, Ian, uh, yes, thank you so much for talking with us, man. Thanks, man. Uh, you're always a pleasure to have on the show. You've been here with us from the very beginning. Uh, if anyone's curious, they can go on YouTube and they can see where we started and where we are now. Uh, Ian's been through all of it, and he knows that we're still working on some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, awesome, dude. Um, I'll see you in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. man. I'll definitely be there. Um, I'm looking forward to it, for sure. Uh, I, wish, I wish I was going to Hell City, but uh, it's, uh, it's not in the cards this time. Awesome. And uh, will you talk to us again sometime? Anytime, man. Just let me know. All right, man. Uh, if anyone wants to get your book, I know you only have a few copies left. Uh, where can they find it? Uh, Lightandshadowbook.com. And, and uh, second printing's on the way, so it's not like it's going to go out of style. I just I keep up playing that I'm almost out, but, you know, whatever. I'm not going to let the things go out of stock. Oh, man. I, yeah, I have several just distributors. Just let that information out there. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> get well, one the, now. The other ones I'm not, the other ones I'm not going to sign, so there you okay, go. Okay, so we've got we to generate <laughs> some demand for those signed ones. Exactly. Well, hey, thanks for talking with us, and we'll talk to you again soon, man. Thanks, Ben. See you, buddy. So that's our show. Uh, thanks to Alex from Italy and Sean Barber from Los Angeles and Ian McCowan coming in from Denver. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, let us know. Uh, we put a lot of work into this, and none of us make any money off it at all. So uh, your feedback means a lot to us. Um, get at us at uh, TattooNow at TattooNow.com. Uh, we just do this for the love and support of tattooing and art. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I get to meet some great people. But uh, we do it for you guys, you know, just as much as we do it for us. And if you like it, we want to know. And if you hate it, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you hate it, let us know. You know, we'll, uh, we'll make changes. And uh, we try to make it better every time. And uh, if you want to see more of this, you can go to our uh, YouTube page. Um, we've got... I don't know, over 70 videos up there now. Uh, subscribe to it. Tell your friends about it. Um, if you're watching the show and uh, you think someone wants to see it, you know, spread us around a little bit of the social media. Uh, like I said a little bit earlier with Ian, um, in two weeks, Russ Abbott is going to be here doing his seminar, which you can get tickets for at TattooNow.com. Uh, it's called the Tattooist Palette. So if you're an artist and uh, you want to uh, develop your career a little bit, Russ will be uh, giving his seminar, and then after, uh, you can be on this show. We're doing it with a live audience. Uh, we're going to take questions from the crowd. Uh, Russ will be there. We're going to be talking with uh, Derb Morrison and Gunner from uh, Red Tree out, uh, out in Ohio. Uh, Derb also runs the Hell City uh, Tattoo Fest, uh, if you're familiar with Derb. He's a great dude. Uh, and then we're going to have a little party afterwards. Russ is going to play some banjo. We've got some bluegrass music going on. Uh, there's a great little bar with cocktails. 
If you don't drink, there's some good non-alcoholic stuff there too. Uh, it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the first time in front of a live audience, so uh, it's going to be a technical challenge for both myself and uh, Matt in the back room. But I think we're going to get through it. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you around uh, next time.